Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our five-minute review nephrology discussion. In the last video, we talked about diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. Today, we'll talk about membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, another nephrotic slash nephritic syndrome. It is associated with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, cryoglobulinemia, and C3 nephritic factor, depending on the type, because we have MPGN type 1 and MPGN, guess what, type 2. So let's get started. This is my playlist please watch these videos in order, at least the nephrology ones. A normal kidney should not let protein in the urine, it should not let blood in the urine either. But a kidney with nephrotic syndrome lets protein in the urine. A kidney with nephritic syndrome bleeds into the urine. What causes pitting edema? It's either increased hydrostatic pressure or decreased oncotic pressure. Hashtag hypoproteinemia. Maybe you're not eating protein. Maybe you're not making protein. Maybe you're losing protein in your gut or in your kidney. Hashtag nephrotic syndrome. Hi, Medicosis. Uh, I know that CHF causes pitting edema. That's true. I also know that nephrotic syndrome causes pitting edema. That's also true. Is there a difference between the two edemas? Yes, there is. The edema of nephrotic syndrome is generalized and usually associated with periorbital edema, eyelid swelling. But the edema of CHF does not have periorbital edema. Have you ever wondered why? The theory is that the high protein ultrafiltrate of cardiac edema sinks. Yeah. CHF is not a disease that makes you lose protein in the urine. Therefore, this edema has high protein and high protein is heavy, heavier than water. It sinks towards your feet. However, edema of nephrotic syndrome is low protein because the kidney is literally losing protein into the urine, making it light. Low density, it's gonna float upwards to your eyelids. This is from Joseph Sapiro. Oh, like physics then. That's right. Hey guys, if you actually believed any of this nonsense, your critical thinking skills are probably null. Why? The theory is that high protein ultrafiltrate of cardiac edema sinks, whereas low protein edema of nephrotic syndrome does not, of course, is not the only explanation. Because if this were the case, we would expect to see periorbital edema and severe cirrhosis, because cirrhosis also has hypoproteinemia. It should follow that it's low protein edema and it should go to the periorbital area. But cirrhosis edema does not involve the periorbital area, which makes this theory not so accurate. Here is what we know. Edema of nephrotic syndrome has periorbital edema, usually. However, edema of CHF or edema of cirrhosis does not have periorbital edema. This is a known fact. The mechanism behind it is not known. Could be because of the previous woke theory or it could be due to salt retention. This kidney is so bad, it cannot retain protein and it cannot excrete sodium. When you retain the sodium, you can get edema periorbitally. Here is nephrotic syndrome, pause and review. But nephritic syndrome ends in itis. Itis, itis means inflammation. The kidney is inflamed, bleeding and losing blood. So what is nephrotic syndrome? High protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. The kidney is losing protein. But nephritic syndrome is H, hematuria, H, hypertension, with jugular venous distension, and the kidney is losing blood in the urine. Nephrotic syndrome has four findings. Nephritic syndrome has seven findings. Blood in the urine, high BUN and creatinine, oliguria, hypertension with jugular venous distension, mild edema, mild proteinuria. Not nephrotic range proteinuria. Here are the diseases of nephrotic syndrome. Here is the pathology in nephritic syndrome. Here are the two doofuses in the middle. They are nephrotic and nephritic in the same time, such as diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, remember the previous video, and membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, which is today's topic. Understand the lingo. Focal means few glomeruli are affected. Diffuse means all glomeruli are affected. Segmental means only a segment of the nephron or glomerulus is affected. Membrano means involving the glomerular basement membrane. 
proliferative means the cells of the glomerular are hypercellular, proliferating like crazy. Glomerulo involving the glomeruli. Nephro involving the tubules. Glomerulonephritis involving both. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. If your kidney is losing plasma proteins, it's nephrotic. If the kidney is losing blood, it's nephritic. Here is the histology of the normal kidney. Pause and review. And here is the histology in cases of membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. We have two types, type 1 and type 2. In type 1, we have subendothelial immune complex deposition below the endothelium. Hypernicosis, where have I heard of immune complexes before? Please go watch my video called Hypersensitivity Reactions, especially type 3 hypersensitivity. Remember when we said immune complex mediated vasculitis, immune complex mediated arthritis, immune complex mediated nephritis. How about type 2 membranoproliferative glomerularis? This is the dense deposit disease. Why do you call it that? Because I have dense deposit inside the membrane. Type 2 goes into the glomerular basement membrane. Intramembranous. Here is the glomerulus. Flip it on its head. What's the red? Glomerular capillary. What's that? Basement membrane. And what's the yellow? Epithelial podocyte. Type 1, subendothelial immune complex deposition, granular immune fluorescence deposition, because I'm going to be deposited like this, like this, like this. When you look, here is a granule, granule, granule. Oh, that makes sense. And these granules will proliferate, activate complement, and then split the basement membrane like this and you will get the tram track appearance. Thanks to the mesangial cell in growth, secondary to complement activation. How about type 2? The deposits go into the membrane. Even though this is type 2, the mnemonic has 3 because this is the dense deposit disease, 3 Ds, and it's caused by C3 nephritic factor known as C3 neph, giving you the tram track appearance. Here is first layer, second layer, third layer because it's split, also 3. Type 1 is associated with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, cryoglobulinemia, signs and symptoms of nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome. In type 2, the C3 nephritic factor is going to bind to and inhibit the degradation of C3 convertase. C3 convertase will persist, overactivate, keeps activating the complement until you consume all of your C3 complement proteins. Also nephrotic, nephritic, either one can cause chronic kidney disease. Here is the classical complement pathway. In type 2, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, you have the C3 nephritic factor, which will bind to and prevent the degradation of C3 convertase. C3 convertase will persist and will keep being active. Active to do what? Well, it's called C3 convertase. It's gonna convert C3 into C3A and C3B. C3B will activate the complement until you end up with the MAC, which will attack your own kidney. Here is minimal change disease. Pause and review. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Pause and review. Membranous nephropathy. Pause and review. Diabetic nephropathy, pause and review. And here is the story of amyloid nephropathy. The last video was about diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. Here are the stages of chronic renal failure. Here is membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. Here is nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome. You can get my premium renal physiology course with 10 videos, 10 cases, answers, notes, and my Perfectionalist Ultimate Notebook at medicosisperfectionalist.com, as well as my acid base imbalance course to learn about how renal failure cause HAGMA, but renal tubular acidosis cause NAGMA. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.